In this video, we will be discussing the anatomy of the celiac trunk. Now, the celiac trunk is one of the main branches. It is one of the three main branches of the abdominal aorta and uh, it supplies all the four gut structures. Now, the celiac trunk, it arises at the level of the intervertebral disc between T12 and L1 vertebra. Now, this is the celiac trunk. This is the celiac trunk. This is arising at the level of the intervertebral disc between T12 and L1. This gives three main branches. So, one, two, and three. Now, the first branch is the left gastric artery. So, this I have uh, put as number one over here. This is the left gastric artery. Second, you are going to get the splenic artery. So, this is the splenic artery. And lastly, you are going to get an artery called the common hepatic artery. Now, these are the three main branches. Now, let us look at these uh, branches one by one. To show you this picture again, you have the celiac trunk. You have the celiac trunk over here. There's three main branches, the left gastric artery, common hepatic artery and the splenic artery. Now, first let us look at the left gastric artery. Now, the left gastric artery, it supplies two major structures. First, it supplies the lower end of the esophagus and second, it supplies the cardia or the proximal most parts of the stomach. So, in this diagram, you can look at, this is the celiac trunk, which is giving rise to the left gastric artery, which I have labeled as number 1. Now, this has 1A and 1B. 1A is the esophageal branches and 1B are the gastric branches. So, these gastric branches, so this these are the gastric branches which has not been labeled over here. So, this was the esophageal branch and this here is the gastric branch. Second, let us look at the common hepatic artery. Now, the common hepatic artery, it gives a few, uh, it supplies a few structures, major structures which I will be detailing now. So, this is the common hepatic artery. It comes over here. It gives one branch which is called the gastroduodenal artery. So, this this which has been labeled over here is the gastroduodenal artery. This has been, this is a branch of, this is the first branch of the common hepatic artery. Now, after giving the gastroduodenal artery, this continuation is called the hepatic artery proper. So, this is the hepatic artery proper. And this is the gastroduodenal artery. Now, this gastroduodenal artery, it further goes down and it gives two branches. One is the right gas. This is this branch. This is the right gastroepiploic, and another branch which is the um, superior pancreatic or duodenal branch superior pancreatic or duodenal so let us look at the markings again yes so this is the right gastroepiploic artery which can be traced sorry which can be traced over here this is the right gastroepiploic artery and you have the superior pancreatic duodenal arteries now after giving the right after, after giving the gastroduodenal artery, so this was the GDA. So I'll erase all this for convenience sake. So to recap, this is the common hepatic artery. This is the gastroduodenal artery. Continuation is called the hepatic artery proper. Now you can see a very small branch over here. This is called the supraduodenal artery which is labeled over here after the supraduodenal artery it continues in its course and so this is the, again the hepatic artery proper this will give another branch over here called the right gastric artery this right gastric artery will anastomose with the left gastric artery so now let us look at the left gastric artery again this was a celiac trunk this is the left gastric artery. This left gastric artery is, is going to supply two major structures. The 
lower esophagus and the gastric branches so these are the gastric branches which are going to which are present all throughout the uh, lesser curvature now this left gastric artery it will anastomose with the right gastric artery so unlike the political spectrum in the anatomical world the left and right unite and here in the right, the right gastric artery therefore is a branch of the um, common hepatic artery and the left gastric artery is a separate branch of the celiac trunk these two unite now now in this diagram this is you can there's one most artery which is called the cystic artery so which is labeled over here this is the cystic artery now in this image of netters the cystic artery is shown to arise from the right hepatic artery now sometimes this um, cystic artery it can arise directly from the hepatic artery proper okay so this was this was the next branch of the so we have we've discussed four branches so far first was the gastrointestinal artery second was the um, supraduodenal artery third was the right gastric artery then we've discussed the cystic artery now the cystic artery sometimes instead of arising from the hepatic artery it can arise from the right hepatic so what is the right hepatic so to understand what is right hepatic let us go back to the hepatic artery proper so this hepatic artery i'll erase this for convenience sake this hepatic artery proper it gives rise to the left hepatic artery and the right hepatic artery this is how it terminates so the cystic artery is sometimes a branch of the right hepatic artery but it can also arise separately from the hepatic artery proper so this is another pic which is showing the same thing now this is a zoomed out pic so you can see over here this is the uh, celiac trunk the celiac trunk is giving rise to the common hepatic artery now let us zoom in again this common hepatic artery will give rise to the gastroduodenal artery so this is the c h a it gives rise to the g d a gastrointestinal artery after giving rise to the gastrointestinal artery this entire thing is called the this entire thing it is sorry not till here this entire thing is called the hepatic artery proper this hepatic artery proper will give rise to one small branch over here which is called the supraduodenal artery then it will give rise to the right gastric artery and it terminates by giving rise to the right hepatic and the left hepatic so this is the left hepatic artery this is the right hepatic artery and as i earlier said the cystic artery can sometimes arise from the hepatic artery proper itself and not from the right hepatic artery now the third major branch of the celiac trunk is the splenic artery now the splenic artery is a very tortuous artery this is the splenic artery In the splenic artery it gives as it courses it first gives numerous pancreatic branches so you can see over here there are numerous pancreatic branches some of these are named some of these are not named as it progresses <coughs> it will give short gastric arteries which you can see over here i'll show in a subsequent diagram the entire image this is the short gastric artery it will also give something called the so this was the short gastric arteries it also gives something called the left epiploid left gastroepiploic artery this is the left gastroepiploic artery and the splenic artery then terminates by supplying the spleen so these are the splenic branches so in this diagram of netters you can see the pancreatic branches so these are named over here so the larger ones are named so it is the dorsal pancreatic artery you also have the great pancreatic artery these white structures here are your pancreatic branches now let us look at the subsequent branches which i just discussed the short gastric and the uh, left gastroepiploic so this is a complete image so as you can see this is the celiac trunk this is the splenic artery it gives a long and tortuous course now along here are the pancreatic branches which we saw in the previous diagram now as it courses you can see it coursing over here as it courses gives rise to short gastric arteries 
then it will give rise to, so this is the splenic artery this is the short gastric arteries it will give rise to a major artery called the left gastro epiploic artery and then it terminates by giving into the splenic artery so now a lot of left and right over so i'll just clarify it again so first let us look at two arteries um, the gastric artery and the gastroepiploic arteries now the gastric arteries so a lot of left and right so just to clear that confusion you have the left gastric right gastric you have the left gastroepiploic or the gastroomental and right gastroepiploic artery so left gastric is a main branch of the celiac trunk right gastric as we saw is a branch of the hepatic artery proper the left gastric epiploic artery is a the left gastroepiploic artery also called the left gastroomental artery is a branch of the splenic artery and the right gastroepiploic artery as you may recall is a branch of the gastroduodenal artery which in turn is a branch of the common hepatic artery so now why are these terms left and right why is it called gastric and gastroepiploic now the difference is the gastric branches supply the lesser curvature of the stomach and the gastroepiploic branches supply the greater curvature of the stomach thank you